Yeah, we're starting a new <laughs> series here on Good Morning Tri-State. Fact Check Friday. Adrian, you take the lead. Yeah, sure. Uh, we're working to try and debunk some of the misinformation out there. You heard Joe talk about some of it, uh, regardless of where or who it comes from. And we're going to need your help to do this down the road so we can answer more of your questions. We'll tell you a bit more about how you can help in just a moment. First, let's just talk about some of the things that happened this week. There was a lot of disinformation related to the election, including some specific tweets from the president flagged by Twitter saying some or all of the content shared in this tweet is disputed and might be misleading about an election or other civic process. There were also fake accounts, as reported by the Wall Street Journal, at least three of them pretending to be the official Associated Press Politics Twitter account calling Michigan for Joe Biden at 1.46 p.m. Wednesday when in fact that race didn't get called by the AP until 5.56 p.m. Twitter suspended those accounts. So there's a long, long way to go on this, but we are seeing social media platforms, especially Twitter, be much more proactive this year in terms of trying to police this kind of disinformation and fake accounts than they were in 2016. Recently, a team from the University of Cincinnati Political Science Department did a scientific study of 8,500 people nationwide basically showing them false info about mail-in ballots and the election and showed them real info from secretaries of state to counter the claims. The study found, by and large, the disinfo attack is incredibly effective and had a significant effect in reducing the faith and delegitimizing the electoral process. Here's Associate Professor Dr. Gregory Winger again. By the time this counter disinformation is out there from a secretary of state, from a AP or a legitimate news source, the information environment, especially on social media, has become so polluted that it really is having a hard time resonating with the general population. And it's a very significant long-term concern. Dr. Winger says the end game isn't even the election. It's months or years from now sowing seeds of doubt in U.S. governance. Something to keep in mind. Hope it helps to understand the landscape we're in right now. And I mentioned that you can help. Send an email to me at newsdesk at WCPO.com. We'll work to get the facts for your questions going forward.